Hi, and welcome to Three Questions With. Brought my friend Scott onto the show today. Come to give us a little tax advice for 2022. Hey, Scott, welcome to the show. How you been? Good, Kevin. How about you? Everything's perfect for me, my friend. So, so awesome. I'm kind of chuckling at you, Scott, because you gave a really good um, piece of advice online is to go out and take a picture of your odometer on your car. And I laughed at it because I mean to do it every year and I don't think I've ever done it. And then use like April, I'm like, oh, I forgot. And then you're trying to figure it out. It's a simple two second thing, but it's important, right? Yes. Um, you need your beginning and ending mileage. If you're in business and you're using your vehicle for the business, you need your beginning and ending mileage. So it's easy enough tomorrow night when you get home or Saturday morning before you go out, start the vehicle, take a picture on your smartphone. You got your beginning and ending mileage. You got your be ending beginning mileage for 22. You got your ending mileage for 21. Simple advice. It is. When you get lube oil filters, whatever you get maintenance done, somewhere on that repair order is your mileage. Take a copy of that receipt and stick it in the folder with your auto expenses. It's just another way to document mileage. The, um, keep a logbook, whether it's uh, a logbook. What I do is I have my daily journal and I say, you know, like today there's something on there that says meet with Kevin. I didn't physically go meet with you, but yeah. if I had, and then I would have a spreadsheet. I, I would have, I do have a spreadsheet that says 1230, meet with Kevin Willett, three questions and X number of miles. Yep. Um, and that's called a contemporaneous logbook. Uh, so many of my clients, even though I keep telling them it doesn't work if they get audited, hand me a piece of paper with dates and miles on it. And I'm like, it's all in the same pencil, pen. You did you did not do this the day you did it or a day or two after. I see what you're saying, yeah. Yep. Um, there's apps. Um, one that comes recommended to me by both colleagues and clients is Mile IQ. I just, now if you have trouble remembering to go out to your car on Friday night, this Friday night or Saturday morning, picture getting into the car and forgetting to click on the app. It just doesn't work for me, but it works for other people. Right. Yeah. Yep. Um, helpful. So that all takes care of your mileage. Good. Second thing I want to talk about today is the business use of home. I think that's really important because I find a lot of us, uh, you know, kind of sharing an empty bedroom, you know, using that for our office. My question to you, does it need to be dedicated space to my business? Yes. The, you have, to, as business owners, we have to meet three requirements. The number one hardest to meet is exclusive use. Uh, you can't. And that's why I don't claim home office or business use of home, because I often sit at this computer and I will look up and I will say, oh, there's something about the Patriots. Mm -hmm. And I will go, look, that's not business use. Yep. Uh, and I'm like Hebrew National as an enrolled agent. I am held to a higher standard. Yep. But it says exclusive use and they can be real prickly about it. <laughs> um. It so has to be it, Go ahead. a follow up question. So in my home office to my right is my treadmill. I was on my treadmill this morning. Technically not exclusive use then, right? Correct. So I got to move my treadmill out of this room. then. If, Correct. if, if I needed to get audited, you know, if it's getting audited, I would need to make sure. Yes. If no you longer in the room, if you get audited, you very definitely don't want that treadmill in the room. Okay. I think um, a lot of people go wrong on this, Scott, is they try to claim, you know, half, you know, well, my office is in the downstairs of my home. It's half my house. I'm going to claim half the expenses of the ones, a family room that we watch TV. in. You, this is, seems like where you can really get flagged if you're not careful. Home office 
business use of the home, home office is one of the flags. It, it kind of sticks out a little bit. Yep. Um, and the IRS has all these algorithms, algorithms and such. So don't fib because <laughs> if you fib to the IRS and they catch you, you yeah, bad. Yep. It does not have to be, you said you have a bare, not a bare bedroom, a spare bedroom. Yep. Um, it does not have to be a place with four walls okay. and a door. Yep. As long as it's a clearly identified area. One of the things we're going to put in the comments is a link to Les Nessman, WKRP in Cincinnati. <laughs> it's only a minute or so long. Watch it. He meets the requirement. He's got duct tape on the floor around <laughs> his office. He's got a dotted line where the door is. Yep. Clearly yep. defined area. And as long as he had that at home, yep. that would be meet the requirement. Cool. The third requirement for a home office or use of a home is regular use. And that one's a little bit nebulous. Um, regular use for a plumber, a subcontractor or, or independent contractor type like that is not the regular use that you and I would have. You know, if they go in there once a week, that's fine. Um, you and I probably need to be in the office more than once a week. Yes. Um, and it's not limited to office. Let's go back to that subcontractor, to that plumbing contractor. They've got all sorts of tools. They yep. don't need all those tools on every job. If they have a dedicated area where they store the tools, where they store the pipes, whatever, and that's all that's used for, they can claim that part of the home as well. I never would have thought of that. And that's perfectly legal. Um, and then you just figure out the square foot of your home and figure out the square foot, uh, square footage of your office yep. storage area, divide the storage office area and then multiply. And then you can take a crap load of expenses, um, uh, mortgage interest, insurance, homeowners insurance. You can take repairs to the home. Utilities, if you do something exclusively for the office, like you paint instead of that nice white you got behind you, and I don't know if that's a backdrop or a, yes. the wall, yep. but if you paint it red and just paint that yep. red, you can claim that whole expense. There's yep. indirect and direct expenses. Yep. And the third thing I want to talk about is a bunch of little stuff but yep. important stuff. Social security. Um, we all want to get social security. They used to send out yearly letters that said, you know, here's your earnings for the last X years. Here's how much you'll get when you turn 62, uh, full retirement age. They don't do that anymore. And something else that's going to be in the comments is a link to set up a so your social my, it's called My Social Security. And you can go in there once a year, whatever, and take a look and say, okay, in 2020, the IRS says I made $60,000. Well, I've got a W-2 that says 100000 So you go, you contact the Social Security Administration and get them to change it because that affects what you get in when you finally retire. Um, a lot easier to do that in 2021 for 2020 than to do it in 2035 for 2020. That's something I never would have thought of, Scott, until you brought that up. When you said that, I was like, wow, that's super helpful because we've heard stories about, you know, people that just had the wrong amount in and it's going to impact your social security payments in the future. So it is super important. It is. And it's easy. I mean, I think it took me all five minutes. Wow. Helpful. Um, For taxes, listen to the news. 
um, listen to the news, listen to folks that are your colleagues and stuff. And if you hear something that's of interest to you, I had a client recently who contacted me and he was talking about the Build Back Better bill, um, which is not dead, but it's on life support. Um, and he's going to buy a Tesla. And he said, do I buy it in 21 or 22? And I said, that doesn't matter e either way. Um, and he said, how much do I get? And I said, you get 7,500. When he said, well, the dealership told me it was 12,000. And I said, nope, it's a Tesla. It's a US, it's not, it's made in the US, but it's not made by union workers. It's only $7,500. Yep. Ask a tax professional. Don't ask your barber. Don't ask the sale, the sales guy at the car lot. Their job is to cut hair and sell cars. Their job is not to do taxes. Ask a tax professional. Nicely said. Um, sole proprietors and single member LLCs, which a lot of us are. And I hadn't thought of this until recently when I read an article. Add somebody to your bank account, not to the SML, the single member LLC. Add the person as a signatory on your bank accounts. You know, I thought, okay, well, my wife and I have a, revo irre a revocable trust. Everything's in it. If I die, she can get to the money in QTAX LLC. She can't. Wow. She can now because I've added her as a. Sure. And eventually she can get to the money, but it's a lot easier just to be able to say, whoops. Yeah. Um, it's simple. It's easy. Banks are easy to do with that. And the last thing mm -hmm. set up a draw, a box, a folder for your tax documents. As they come in, as documents come in and you think it might be tax related, first of all, open the letter. <laughs> Especially if it's from the IRS, it, just because you don't open the letter doesn't mean it doesn't count. It's yeah. a rule. <laughs> and the IRS to, and I probably shouldn't use this word, gets really pissed when you ignore them. Um, so just shove the documents in a folder it's a lot easier when you come to me as a tax professional and I can say, okay, I don't know what this is. I don't need this yep. versus my say, well, you know what? I need the 6419, which is, the, I think, the, the correct number for the letter that's coming for the child, the advanced child tax credit. Yep. I sense. need this. I, you know, because we don't want to claim more than we should, and we don't want to claim less than we should. Mm -hmm. We found out this year, 2021, doing the 2020 taxes with the stimuluses, people said, well, I don't know how much I got. Now, you know, family, of, you know, mom and dad and a kid got like $3,000 at one point. I would notice that in my bank account. I don't know, but you know, they, they don't know how much they got. Right. And if we put down the wrong number, that held up the returns for months. Wow. So just pick a place, yep. pick a safe place and <laughs> shove it in there. Awesome. So, so Scott, what's the best way for people to reach out to you? How can they learn more, my friend? Uh, they can go to they can give me an email at scott at qtaxllc.com and I can direct them where to go. Um, it's a lot easier. Um, my website's out there, uh, which is qtaxllc.com. Mm -hmm. It's got all the HTT, PBS and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Go out and take a look. Awesome. Scott, I really appreciate you coming on to the show. And as always, thanks for being my friend. Thank you and happy new year to everybody. Happy new year.